Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today I'm bringing you guys along. We're headed out on the water for a morning session throwing top water. This should be fun. Let's go. I recently did a video for you guys talking about springtime topwater, breaking down the different styles of baits and what each one of them is for. Today we're actually out on the water. Today we're going out and throwing topwater, at least for a morning session here. We're focusing our attention on poppers and walking baits because we're on a highland clear water reservoir. This should be really good. I love this time of year. I love topwater. I think we're gonna have a blast. There we go. That's a nice fish. Whoa, that's a good spot. I saw him come up and slurp that popper. He's just taking drag. Oh, it's a large mouth. Oh, that's a good fish. Oh, he's got one hook point. One hook point. That is awesome. Look at that. What a way to start the day. Throw on that little, it's actually the Mega Bass. Pop X, the smaller one. Awesome. Such a nice fish. Such an awesome way to start the day throwing top water. So when I'm throwing the popper, I try to go, there she goes. I try to go really finessey. So this is actually a 13 fate black rod. It's a six foot seven medium. And it did a great job of keeping those little tiny trebles pinned in that great big large mouth. <laughs> little guy. Little spotted bass came off the end of a tree. He is little, <laughs> but we'll take him. Shower blows 105. Oh, missed him. He ate it on the pond. I wanna give you guys some quick tips on when to use the walking bait versus a popper. Uh, you know, today I'm using them universally. I'm going back and forth between them like a one-two punch. Uh, there's a couple of different things. So one is if you're throwing a walking bait and you get blown up and they miss, or you throw a couple of times, they miss it multiple times, stopping, switching over to a popper will often give you another shot at that fish. That slower moving popper just popped and left to sit, popped, left to sit, where you already know that fish is, can be a great way to convert them and actually get them in the boat. Um, the walking bait itself is an amazing way to cover water. Uh, you can get on these banks like this one behind me where there's just rows of laydowns, right? The fish could be anywhere in here. I could take a walking bait and just go and go and go and go and go and go and just cover water. If there's chop on the water, even better. I've got a little ripple here, perfect for a walking bait. But if this slicks off, I'll switch over to a popper. Or if I'm going into pockets, like this morning, I got on the water a little bit later than I wanted. And actually I'm afraid we might've missed our top water window. We might have to switch gears altogether. Uh, 
because after those first couple fish, I've had five or six slaps. That's why I took the shower blows off and put the Rover on. I was trying to convert them, but now it just seems to have shut down completely, but I'll bet we can switch gears, still catch a bunch of fish. Uh, but as I've gone into these pockets, if the pocket has ripple in it, and again, let me, sorry, what I started to say is that I got on the water a little late, so I started running pockets because there's still shadows in the backs of the pockets. So that's allowing me to basically stretch out the morning and stretch out that top water bite just a little bit longer uh, because it seems that now that the sun's overhead, these fish have backed out a little bit. Now that said, the pockets that have chop in them have ripple. I do way better with a walking bait. The pockets that are calm, you know, glass calm, like a mirror finish on the water, the popper will stomp a walking bait. It will stomp it, not even a comparison. So again, one, two punch, switching between my options. I can cover way more water with a walking bait, but I can be much more precise and spend more time over the heads of the fish with a popper if I know where they are. So this morning, that biggest fish, I was in a, we'll call it a trash pocket, right? There's a bunch of lay downs, a bunch of wood blown in there just a bunch of trash, but there was only room for about three or four casts in the back of that pocket. I got bit by a little one, and then I moved over maybe 20 feet, made another cast, and you're just slow working that bait, and I saw the fish rise. I didn't realize how big it was, but I saw it rising, and I just left the popper laying there, and she sucked it down. Just textbook, great big large mouth eating a tiny little popper, just awesome. All right, let's get back to it. There's one. I got bit twice on the Senko. Missed it both times. A lot of times this year, that means bed fish. I don't know if this was or not, because it's so shady in there, but I picked up my BFS combo. Straight seven pound fluoro. Oh, that's a nice fish. Little TRD bugs. On a Texas rig. That's awesome. Look at that. It's the world's smallest <laughs> Finesse flipping setup and a nice largey. It's a tiny little hook. Texas rigged. TRD bugs. Little 1 16th tungsten weight. It's awesome. Jumbo largemouth just followed that out. They kept right on going. Maybe, maybe, maybe I could turn them around. They were big, like a five, a six, and a seven. Wow. It was just a Hail Mary throwing back. They saw me and just kept right on going out of the cove. Jeez. That BFS is all fun and games until I get in the wood. Come here, buddy. Another nice fish. How fun. Thank you. Again, I'm taking a tiny creature 
It's a Z-Man TRD Bugs sprayed grass color. I've just got it. Texas rigged like a little tiny creature bait. And I'm flipping around this wood. Except I'm flipping with seven pound fluoro instead of braid because the water's clear and the fish are finicky and it works. <laughs> nice. That hook is in there. Come on. There we go. <laughs> Too much fun. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> hey, buddy. Well, we've got him eating the popper again. Just not quite the right size. There we go. <laughs> the yellow magic. If you guys saw in that last topwater video I did, I was talking about how if I just need to get bit, that smallest size of yellow magic will do it. Here we are, middle of the day, putting a few more topwater fish in the boat. That is just too much fun. Thank you, friend. <laughs> there we go. Stay on there. He's got one hook. <laughs> all right guys i think we're gonna end it with that one what a fun day you know, we got a little bit of a late start frankly i didn't think it was going to matter so i got out here probably a couple hours after i should have because right out the gate that top water bite was rocking and then it just just flatlined i mean dead dead um if we hadn't been able to turn to a little creature bait on BFS or to a Senko. I mean, we would have had a rough go after that, but it was interesting because the fish almost wanted to play. And what I mean is I probably had a dozen fish pop up on a big swim bait. Um, once they wouldn't eat topwater, I just started fan casting a big bait and I actually had two bites on it.
Um, and one of them crushed it, but it, it didn't get hooks. Um, but I thought that was interesting. And then that bite faded too. And then there was just nothing going. But as soon as that sun got over just far enough that I started having shadow lines again, that top water bite came right back. That's what I was hoping would happen. I'm really glad we got to end it that way. Uh, started out throwing that little pop X, ended throwing the little yellow magic. Uh, just too much fun. It's using a light tackle all day long. Uh, down in the video description, I'll link the various baits and the gear that I was using. Uh, like this rod is super affordable uh, and did a great job with that popper. Uh, just, just a blast. Sometimes it's just fun to go out and lean on some fish. So again, I'll link all the gear in the video description. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.